What's up, everybody? It's LG Set here. Today is Monday, March 8th, 2021. Welcome to the First Mint, a podcast where we cover marketplace trends, big sales, and everything going on with NBA Top Shot. If you are new to Top Shot and you think the last couple of days of the All-Star break have been wild and a little bit frustrating, know that you're not alone. We all want this product to work well, and we all want to collect and invest. And naturally, we will all get a little frustrated when things don't work exactly as we think they should. Today on the show, we're going to talk a little bit more about that. And then we're also going to have a sweet interview with Mr. Chugs and Bugs, someone who is very important in the First Mint Network. He and I are going to have a little conversation about the best way to approach a lot of your new moments that you may have acquired, as well as how to approach the moments that you already have in your account. Pretty much just a general strategy discussion on Top Shot. I want to remind everybody here that none of the content on the show constitutes trading advice in any way, that this show is not affiliated with NBA Top Shot, the NBA, or Dapper Labs. I'm just a guy at his house who loves basketball and blockchain. This is the first mint. As of this recording, the marketplace is still down. But I do feel like, although that's frustrating, there is actually something new that is about to happen on it. Usually it's not down for this long without something being changed. So let's cross our fingers that it's back up soon. Hopefully by the time you're listening to this, you are also on the marketplace making those sweet deals that we all love to make. Some very quick updates before we get into it. Some updates around Top Shot that you may have missed. First, the challenges for the new sets. So the Seeing Star set is out the first challenge is up it's for kevin durant the next challenge will be for lebron and it will very likely require all the moments that are not included in the kevin durant challenge we also got confirmation from jacob on saturday that that lebron challenge will not start for at least a couple of weeks so that lebron challenge won't happen now it will happen in a couple of weeks probably when the kevin durant one expires which isn't for another 20 days so seeing stars lebron not for a little while Rising Stars, the other set that was released this weekend and that was a little bit hotter and also a rare set, that one will also have two challenge rewards. The first challenge is out right now. It's for Anthony Edwards and you need half of those moments to complete it. And then very likely when that challenge is over, which also is in three weeks, we will start the other challenge, which will be for Zion. So in three weeks from now, we're anticipating that there will be a Seeing Stars LeBron challenge and a Rising Stars Zion challenge running at the exact same time won't happen before that so just keep that in mind other stuff to look out for cool cats 3 is very likely dropping this week if not early next week we already know we've known since last week who the other players would be as part of cool cats 3 they've already been minted there's 15,000 of each one that are going to be ready to be dropped in packs those players are shea gilgis alexander rj barrett goran dragic demontis sabonis and Kristaps porzingis the reward for cool cats 3 will be nikola Jokic, and again you will need all six of those moments to complete the lamello master challenge also, typically with Cool Cats challenges, you also need some common moments. It's not yet known if those common moments will be from the 15,000 set or from the 35,000 set. I would say it's probably the latter, just so it's a bit more accessible to people. But again, you never know. One other little wrinkle that's been pointed out by many people for that Cool Cats 3 is that all six of those players are international players. So it is likely that some of those common moments will also be international players. But again, we don't know. Only other challenge that's going on, well, there's two others. There's Metallic Gold for Terry Rozier. So if you like Metallic Gold too, you can do that challenge. There's also Hollow Icon, which has been pushed back a day for the James Harden reward reminder. That is the first James Harden moment minted that has him in a Brooklyn Nets jersey. So that's very nice. That challenge ends tomorrow. And for the, you know, 40 or 50 of you who might actually be contemplating doing it, good luck. I hope you get a very good serial number. Overall, other things to look out for is generally pack drops. We might get Cool Cats 3. We might get that pre-order release 21 that we pre-ordered a week ago. We might get more stuff. The queue system pretty much works. The marketplace doesn't work, but the queue system does. And I would assume that Dapper is about to just fire that up and start cranking out tons more stuff. So when you're thinking about your strategy and you're listening to Chugs talk in a little bit on this podcast, keep that in mind that tons more supply is very likely on the way. Before we get into the chat with Chugs, before we get into that, I want to talk about the last couple of days of drops. It's been a very interesting couple of days on Top Shot. Rising Stars was announced on the website, meaning the NBA used the Top Shot website to announce something huge, the Rising Stars. And we had four different drops in three days. 
which added up to over 778,000 moments being added to the ecosystem. During that time, a lot happened on the Top Shot side as well. Challenges were launched, as we just discussed, and some of the rules were changed. To be able to do the Rising Stars drop, you had to own a moment in your account, which was obviously done to help prevent bots and, and scammers and people with multiple accounts. But again, it was changed without people really knowing it's going to be changed. That, whether it's worrisome or not, I'm not thinking about it too much. But what I did find worrisome was the market not being open very much. And for everybody who shared their frustrations and obviously their joys as well at opening packs, but mainly everybody who has shared on Twitter and Discord their general frustrations, I hear you and I feel you. And I'll tell you that I am not very happy about it either. I really do believe that Top Shot is being built for the long term. And now that's become clear in the last couple of weeks as the product has clearly gotten the NBA's full support. If it didn't have it already with the license, it's now clear that the NBA is very interested. Whether we think things are being done the right or the wrong way, there's no way to tell in the short term. Obviously, things are frustrating, but long term, this all these decisions could actually be very beneficial for us. But with that being said, it did take me a bit of extra time to get this podcast out today because honestly, I had to gather my thoughts, I had to gather my feelings and really understand what Top Shot is trying to do and also try to translate that into what the First Mint is trying to do. And after stewing on all that for a little bit last night after the All-Star game, I came to this. The First Mint is also here for the long run. We are here to represent the community and you're going to see us do that more in the next weeks and months. Keep sharing your feelings. Keep asking us questions. We will always be here for the community and with the community to navigate this wild world of Top Shot. Whether it's me, Phil, Plunge, Chugs, Greg, Steve, and everybody else in the network, we are here to serve you guys and to grow as the community grows. Everyone else who's out there as part of the community who's been helping people out, answering people on Twitter, helping alleviate their fears and their frustrations, we see you and we salute you as well, the people doing that great work. We don't know what the next couple days and weeks hold in Top Shot. There will be more market dips. There will be more new users. There'll be more big things that seem like they're marketing, even though we've been told the marketing's not happening. There'll be new moments. There'll be confusing challenges. There will be changes to the platform. All that's going to happen. And we're going to go through all that together. I know I've said this a few times, but we will always be here as the first mint to help you navigate that no matter how frustrating or annoying it gets. I really do believe, again, in the long term, and I do think things will get much better from here. The only thing I can offer you is a little bit of patience, take a step back from the product, and let's just hope that everything gets smoothed out very soon. Next up, you're going to hear parts of my conversation with Mr. Chugs and Bugs, which we had last night when the marketplace was still down. And before we get into that, I'm just going to give you a quick primer. I know a lot of people have been asking about how to price their moments and also what's happening on the marketplace. Why has there been a pullback in prices? So I'm going to give you a little primer before we dive into the interview. First thing I'm going to talk about is base moments. Base moments are supposed to be base. They are not supposed to be necessarily going for hundreds of dollars on the marketplace or even thousands for some of them. They are meant to be the base layer of the Top Shot ecosystem. In the last six weeks, that idea, that concept has been kind of mutated by the extreme demand on the marketplace to the point where some base moments now do go for thousands of dollars. And even two weeks ago, you couldn't even get a base moment for less than 30. That is not actually the way things are supposed to work on Top Shot. I don't think that that is the design. It's just what happens when there are too many people wanting too little supply. The ultimate goal, in my belief, for Top Shot is for the expected value of a new pack, especially a base pack, to be even, equal to what will actually be inside. Meaning a pack that costs $14, the expected value should be about $14. And again, obviously right now, we're nowhere near that. But I just want to point out that that is the ultimate goal for Top Shot is to stabilize the economy so that new people who come into the game are able to buy a base moment of their favorite player for under 20 bucks. That is the ultimate goal. So if you're worried about new moments being minted, know that that is where Top Shot is trying to go with it. New moments of current players are coming out. Someone like Damian Lillard, he has a new base moment that is one of 35,000. He also has a previous base moment of 15,000 and one of 7,500 as well as a variety of other moments. We're seeing new stuff come out of the rookies, the stars, and all the players on Top Shot. Naturally, new supply like that of the same player, even if it's a different play, even if it has a slightly different designation, will naturally dilute the value of all that player's moments. 
Doesn't matter if those old moments are going to be triple badge rookies or first moments or whatever, new supply of the same player will naturally dilute it. So someone like LaMelo Ball, for a long time, there's only been one LaMelo Ball that we could actually buy on the marketplace, the one of 4,000, his triple badge rookie. But now there will be several more in the next couple of weeks that we will be able to buy. So again, keep that in mind. With more of the same player comes a natural dilution of that player. And of course, how to designate between those cards really depends on the play. My biggest piece of advice in general going forward is learn from the past, but look to the future. Think about what is going to happen on Top Shot. What do we know is going to happen in the next 7 to 14 days and play your cards based on that. I know a little bit of advice, a couple sentences of advice like that is not nearly enough to go on. So again, know that at the first mint, we're doing everything we can to help you navigate that and that where you're going to start to see a lot more of the first mint network on our streams and on our pods as we expand our coverage and our advice for stuff in Top Shot. Starting this week, we'll be adding another weekly evening stream with the Plunge Father. It's gonna be on the First Mint YouTube channel. He's been doing a great job on his Twitch, but we're bringing him over to YouTube. He's gonna be diving into market-specific dynamics, tackling topics like how to price things, why serial numbers matter, and just everything general in analytics. It'll be a great show for you to check out on the regular. And starting with this episode, we have someone else, Chugs and Bugs, from the First Mint Network, who is going to give you his thoughts as one of the smartest analysts out there. He's been on Top Shot, I think, since mid-January. He absolutely loves to crunch data, whether it's market caps for new moments, market caps by country, market cap by team, or just generally everything that's going on with moments in Top Shot. One of my absolute favorite charts that he has made recently is he gave an estimation on the value of the new rookie moments like Emmanuel Quickly, Jason Tate, Peyton Pritchard. He gave an estimation on those based on their PR, their minutes, and their overall value in the league compared to the prices of the previous triple badge rookies like LaMelo Ball and James Wiseman. He made an awesome chart like that last week. You can dig through Twitter a little bit to find it. That is the kind of data he makes, and I was very excited to have him on the podcast. So have a listen. All right, folks, we are on with Mr. Chugs and Bugs. You definitely know him from Twitter and from the Top Shot Twitter sphere. He is a very close ally of the First Mint and in our network, and also one of the smartest people that you could talk to about Top Shot and the data that surrounds it. Mr. Chugs and Bugs, it is very nice to finally have you make your First Mint debut. Yeah, uh, thrilled to be here. It's kind of it's kind of nice, uh, weirdly enough, the marketplace being down and we can just watch a basketball game <laughs> just without like watching prices move up and down and stuff. So it's it's kind of it's kind of a beautiful disaster in a lot of ways. Right. We can we can just enjoy the all star game. Just sit back, get some popcorn and, and enjoy the sights and enjoy the, the dunk contest. Let's put it that way. And then contemplate what you're going to do when the marketplace actually opens back up. Yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. I think Steve, um, another you know kind of friend of the first man, he had put out he had put out a tweet saying, um, you know, basically let's just shelve all of our predictions for now, and we'll we'll come back to you later with analysis. So, you know, we're not open right now, and and it, it it's true though. A lot of a lot of people like us who try to kind of put out some higher level intel, it, it's it almost falls apart minutes later when you don't have. A steady flow of transactions and, and valuation is, you know, wildly distorted because of that. You know, I think the all-star prices themselves, the seeing stars set, you know, is a perfect example of that. I mean, right now, I think it's safe to say, and granted, it's sort of self-fulfilling for me because my initial predictions were pretty high relative to where prices are now, but it just, everything seems very low mainly because the assumed sort of challenge premium or utility premium, as I've called it, you know, basically the extra you would pay for a moment because it's attached to some sort of prize at the end, right? In this case, it's Kevin Durant. If you've got team Durant pieces, which that challenge is going on now, and in the, you know, in the latter period, it's going to be a LeBron at the end. And typically with a challenge like that, you know, there's, there's a massive premium placed on those moments. And right now it just, it doesn't seem like it at all. I mean, you're only having to pay a couple thousand bucks maybe, it, you know, if you were just going to start from zero, you didn't even get a pack and you've got a LeBron and a free roll at a great serial number uh, at the end of it. Same with Kevin Durant. So, you know, the marketplace being down, it just makes it incredibly hard to sort of peg, you know, where stuff belongs right now, which, you know, for the opportunist this is a great time to try to dip in whenever the marketplace is open, even if it's for an hour or two. That's something we don't talk about enough, I think, in general, is that Top Shot being in beta is that there will be times when the marketplace is down. 
that I it's not an ideal state and it's very not ideal for it to be down for most of something like All Star Weekend. But that this isn't the last time it'll be down and that there might be other many other times after a pack drop where a lot of people want to make quick moves. But the marketplace is down. This is it might be an even more timely time to talk about what to do and how to prepare for a new supply of moments when the marketplace is down and how to kind of prepare yourself for the week to come before it opens back up. Let's actually get into it, though. Let's talk about this new supply. So in the last couple of days, we have seen a huge influx into the marketplace of new stuff. We have Seeing Stars, which is there are 10,000 each and there's 24 of them. So we're looking at 240,000 moments, a premium common moment, but still a common moment and all of them being relatively big stars. We now have Rising Stars, which is 36,000 or so moments coming into the market. So we're at 270,000 new moments. All of them have great premium players, players that you want, plus all the commons that came along with all of that, plus all the pre-order commons that we don't know when they're going to drop. Jacob has said that it could be next weekend and it could be it could be before, he said. And as well, this week, we know that there probably will be Cool Cats 3 that will also hit. You know, in this current phase of Top Shot, we have never seen an infusion of moments into the market like this. From your standpoint, Chugs, how are all the new collectors and veteran collectors, how are they supposed to make sense of the moments that they're receiving? How are they supposed to value these? Yeah, I think that, you know, while the market is down, it's a great time to sort of reflect on what you want to be within Top Shot. Right. There's three, at least I kind of look at it as there's three different types, right? There's the trader who wants to get in and out of stuff quickly. You know, a lot of, a lot of activity, but very low, you know, margin, so to say, in other words, they need the marketplace open a lot and they're playing in highly liquid, all those, all those base level moments with, with a lot of cereals, a lot of offers, and they're trying to find little inefficiencies here and there. There's the collectors who are making more emotional decisions but they're also chasing challenges, which funny enough, I've kind of found myself in that boat um, lately, you know, despite kind of my analytics bend uh, to things, you know, you can decide if collector is your path or if you're going to be investor, you sort of hone in on, in, in my opinion, from the investor standpoint, like if you're taking a longer term view, what are lasting moments? What are culturally relevant moments, players? It's a good time to sort of cal- recalibrate sort of where you stand on that. Do you want to Again, dink and dunk, or do you want to take a big swing on somebody that you think is really going to matter a year from now or, or six months from now or somebody who you think is going to go deep in the playoffs? Hold on. I got to stop you right there. What is dink and dunk? <laughs> You're showing your Canadian side here. <laughs> dink and dunk is a football, an American <laughs> football a term basically meaning uh, short yardage plays, right? You're just You're just taking – you're making very high percentage of success moves or decisions, but they're not getting you very far each time. So basically, you're making up for it with volume, which God bless the folks that like the grind. It's not my bag. That, I mean, that's totally a way to thrive in Top Shot, just playing the liquidity game. I think Wade's is probably the most prominent kind of Top Shot voice that has said liquidity is your friend, you know, when you're trying to sort of build your collection or maybe build up a little bit of dapper balances, not necessarily just going for the, a big fish and hoping that your thousand dollars turns to ten thousand dollars. It's finding the small, finding some of the small, like more digestible stuff in his case. And I think a lot of people would agree, maybe you buy in bulk, maybe you buy five or six of this that you think is woefully underpriced by six, $7, or I guess today's top shot pricing world, you know, 20, 20, $30 or something. You know, when you see that price change for you, that goes in your favor, you execute that way. Again, that's kind of a grind, but one of the few paths that people can take um, when all this new supply hits. You talk often about utility and its importance for evaluating moments. Can you just kind of go into detail there and kind of tell maybe some of the new folks what exactly you mean by utility and why it's important? Yeah. So with a moment, it has its assigned value. And typically for most moments out there right now, it's assigned value is literally just what it is worth. What is somebody, somebody is willing to pay for it, right? It has no utility to that at that point. Like most moments don't. Now, if a moment has something that it can be used for, and in this case, challenges are really the only thing for that moments can be used for, that whatever the value, there, there's a sort of mental math that is done. People sort of estimate, okay, there's a prize at the end of this. It's going to be worth something. That means the product, the, the moment that I have 
that is going to lead towards that is that there's some extra in there for me. It's utility. That's that's what that extra is. And so that elevates prices of moments that otherwise would be, you know, in some cases, significantly cheaper. I think the most egregious one that I remember was uh, there was a Steph MGLE challenge. And Steph's obviously a widely desirable moment or, or player. Well, you had to get nine different MGLEs and they're all mostly you know, just guys in the league. There are a couple there. I think Jamal Murray was in there. There's a couple of good players, but like for the most part, it's got guys in the league. And for whatever reason, Evan Fournier in there was pricing at like $4,000, which if you looked at historicals or any, like it made no sense. Sort of the rub there is, well, it's a key cog to getting this step. It, it must've been, there must've been some supply and demand kind of technical going on there where that was the most coveted piece that most people hadn't happened to not have had, or the sellers, the Evan Fournier sellers were like, you know what, we're going to, we're going to put, put everybody in a tight, in a tight spot here. And we're going to hold the line at a particularly high level, you know, make it harder for somebody to complete that challenge. So that Evan Fournier had a massive amount of utility embedded in that price. Let's say the real value of that Evan Fournier was a thousand dollars, but the price with a Steph reward attached to it, $4,000. So they were placing a $3,000 utility premium on that moment, which is, I mean, that's like a massive, massive premium. I mean, most of the time, I, you know, for All-Star, I estimated a 75% premium. So that would mean if a moment costed was normally a hundred bucks, like standalone, I would say it's no, it's now worth 175 because of the, the reward attached to it. Is that because the reward is an All-Star? Like, where did you come up with that number 75%? I, I went with 75%, which it was sort of a roundabout kind of figure. I looked at the Luca, the cool cat premium, which at the time, and, and because that's an easy one to look at because the LaMelo master challenge reward is, you know, widely considered a, a big, a big catch for everyone who's going for it. The Luca at the time when I was doing the all-star um, predictions, it was like maybe in 89, I want to say it was an 89% premium to the same S1 common, like similar mint size, but it was 89% higher. And you'd say, well, why is it 89% higher? Well, it's because there's a Lamello attached to it at the end of the tunnel, basically. I didn't use 89%. I just wanted to go with a more round figure. And so I went with 70, I went with 75%. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, you can be as logical as you want on things, but market's going to market, as I like to say. Uh, it's your favorite line. <laughs> okay, that's good. Yeah, I like that. I'm going to come back to that uh, that kind of random estimation in a minute. But based on that, I guess, retroactive observation of utility, we have so much new stuff that's just come out for you that could have utility attached to it, right? Everything that's in, obviously, Seeing Stars, all that, half of them are now involved in the Kevin Durant challenge. And we know the other half will be involved in the LeBron challenge in a couple weeks, which we know is not coming out for a couple weeks. But still, they'll have that attached utility for the ones that aren't currently in the Kevin Durant one. Rising Stars, there's going to be two challenges. There's Anthony Edwards that has also started. And then there's going to be Zion Williamson, which will start probably after it. And then also for a lot of the commons... There's a potential utility. We don't know which ones, but we know that some of those commons will be used in the Cool Cats 3 challenge and potentially in other challenges. So with all that in mind, if you've just received some of these moments and or you are trying to grab some of them, how do you know how much you should sell it for? Yeah, I mean, I think that if you have a, you know, a utility item, a, a moment that has utility, your best way is to, you know, you basically try to back into, well, what's the value of the reward that I'm going to get at the end of it? If you're, if you're only sitting on that one utility moment and you're not going to go for the challenge, you're just trying to figure out, you know, where should I list this thing or, 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 you know, what is it really worth? I think it, it is probably wise and this isn't financial advice, but I think it's wise to, you know, capitalize on that challenge window. When a moment is part of a challenge, its value is probably at its near peak, absent any kind of you know overall move in the top shot universe. If it's with if it's in play for a challenge reward, that's where it's gonna be, you know, its value is probably gonna be maximized. Again, not financial advice to say pun everything that's within a challenge when a challenge is going on, but the data bears out, that's when the value typically is at its peak. 
So really it's, it's just a matter of you find a level that you're comfortable with. If you got it in a pack, you obviously have a much lower cost basis there. So you're not trying maybe to sweat out every, every single dollar that you can maybe get out of it. I think it's just important to recognize when things are in challenges. That is, if you're not going to do the challenge, that is a really good opportunity to sort of rebuild some dapper. Basically, if you got lucky with a, with a coveted moment that maybe you aren't particularly attached to um, in any kind of way, you know, it's not a player you really care for. It's not a moment you really care for. That's, that's an easy opportunity, you know, in my opinion, really. No, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's really solid advice. It's just a great way to look at it. How would another pack drop affect the market this week? Whether it's Cool Cats 3 or even, let's say, a Legendary. Because, you know, <laughs> Dapper has promised. They've said that there would probably be a Legendary drop every month. And the Hollow Icon, I think, has been over. It's been almost over a month now since that uh, that very precarious Saturday morning yeah. or Saturday afternoon of the, the Hollow <laughs> Icon drop. But we know we'll probably see more. And it could be, it could be more All-Star stuff. It could be like, I don't know, Dunk Contest Legendaries or something like that. Or it could be a totally new set of legendaries that we haven't even thought of yet. But whether it's those or it's cool cats or it's a new rare set, what would that do to the market if, if that was dropped this week? Yeah, I mean, I think we've got sort of this bittersweet thing that happened this weekend where we saw a massive amount of supply brought into the system pretty much without a hitch, like just from the supply drop side of things, right? Yes. I mean, yes. I remember the time when everything you know the lines were paused constantly people were glitching into the the checkout line basically and skipping lines and you know just a total disaster this weekend we had frankly unprecedented supply brought into the market in a couple of days again without a hitch the marketplace however seemed to massively suffer from this to me if i were the guys over there i don't think more supply would be the uh would be the priority necessarily. I, I think obviously they have schedules that they want to try to keep and, you know, that, and that's all good and well. I think, you know, the marketplace is probably what, you know, you need the marketplace to be to be up and running, I, I would think, before any kind of major supply drop. Now, a legendary, I actually don't think would have as huge of an impact because it's less moments. It's a higher entry point. So it's, it's not, you know, the, not everybody, I mean, now granted, look, the expected values of, of packs still being pretty darn positive. Yeah, there's probably going to be a, still a pretty huge amount of people who line up to pay a grand for, for a legendary pack. But I don't think the, the sheer amount of moments that come out is going to be, would be so much smaller that I don't necessarily think a legendary drop would actually, would actually kill the market in the way that however many packs it was, geez, 200 something thousand, you know, packs that we've gotten, I think a legendary would actually work okay, which sounds crazy. Man, it's a good point. Yeah, it's a good point. 210,000 packs too, yeah. And with some of them with seven moments in them. But I will say, I will say, I agree with you. I don't, I don't think an infusion of legendaries would, would impact the market too much, but I think the announcement of a legendary pack could tank it a little bit, as we usually see. Because that we saw that a month ago, is that a thousand bucks is a lot and a lot of people aren't necessarily going to bring that as new funds but where they might have an over a thousand dollar account value and they're going to try and liquidate some of that to raise funds for that pack which we saw happen on a hollow icon and i've seen happen in the past as well so yeah i agree with you it wouldn't it wouldn't it wouldn't affect it that much but the announcement of it could always have a little bit of a blip prior to this to the new stuff that we've seen in the last couple of days the marketplace was already kind of in in rough shape, or rather, the people's account values were in rough shape for maybe the week or so before that. Why? Things can kind of get stale. You can, if if you're not really having new entrants come in, I think a lot of people sort of make make the bets that they want to make. They're kind of sitting on sitting on what they have, and you know, there's certain people that are taking this strategic, you know, long term view where they think, look, whatever I buy right now, and and they'll probably focus on players they like, good players, relevant players, good moments, you know, that kind of stuff. They're more playing the macro where this, this user base is going to quadruple. It's just going to be a rising tide that lifts all boats. You know, those are people that might already just be simply locked in and they're just not going to put any more money in until they really start seeing something happen for, you know, the market move for them in that way, which is kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy in a way, because you're basically saying, well, I'm just going to sit here. Well, what if nobody else really comes comes to play and, and helps move that market for you. It, it's kind of got this weird, you know, capital kind of freezes up. People just don't 
people kind of, again, make their bets and, and just kind of sit there. That's going to inevitably, you know, shake the tree for some people who maybe don't necessarily want to sit in a moment for, you know, in this situation, you know, the market changes so quickly, you know, but maybe a week is too long for somebody sort of get somebody to say, you know what, I'm just going to punt this and just have, have Dapper and I'll just wait till something else cool comes out and, and get involved then. You know, if you were the person who did that a week ago, you had tons of Dapper and you had plenty of opportunities to get new stuff now. Very specific question about some of the new stuff. Obviously, some of the rookies, I'll just use them as an example. Some of the rookies have been very hot, right? Out of the gate through series two. But now a lot of them are going to have a second and maybe even a third moment added, right? You think about someone like Tyrese Halliburton, he has a new common, but he also has a rising star. So just like that, Tyrese Halliburton has gone from having a one of 4,000 common as his only moment, and it's, it's a triple star rookie for sure, but it's his only moment, to now having a rare moment with half the mint, as well as another common moment with 35,000, if not more, commons there. How is that going to affect the price of that original moment long term? And I and I had to talk ju- not just for Halliburton and the other four thousand rookies, but also for the guys who have first moments in series two, uh, like any of the one of twelve thousand limited moments. And I'll just give you one of my personal favorites: someone like Chris Boucher, who hasn't gone for that much uh, even in his limited first moment, but now he's going to have another one that's one of thirty five thousand. How will those first moments fare for both for first moments and rookie moments with the new supply? My gut thought honestly, is that it's going to sort of have a, I think it'll have a negative impact because I think that when the moment pool of a player expands, I think at that point, the moment itself becomes a little more important because you can pick from different ones. It's not just, I own the Zion. It's like, I can pick from eight different Zions. And so there's only so much money that can, that can sort of go around. And so those dollars are naturally going to be, you know, the Zion dollars, let's call it. Or in this case, we'll say the Halliburton dollars because you brought that one up. You know, there's only so much money that people are going to say, I want to put it on Halliburton. And right now there's only one, well, before the, the rising stars, there was only one place you could really do that. And now there's going to be multiple places you can do that. And so there's going to be some money that diverts away from that to go to the other, to the other, you know, moments to get different exposure. Maybe they think, the rising star moment is actually better, just a better moment. It's going to have a last, more lasting impact than the than the triple badge first moment. Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I think the triple badge is going to actually is going to be a major major uh, value add to those moments. But for I, first game too, for first game is right, so cool, right? Right, right. and exactly. that's like you know we're talking about what's going to hold long term. It's like there's only so many moments ever in Top Shot really that are going to be from someone's first game. Right. I think, again, that triple badge is probably going to remain sort of a cut above. It's going to be held higher. But I do think, though, that for the rookies and for really any player in Top Shot, as their moment library expands, there's going it, it, to there's gonna be a shift in how those, those valuations are made. In other words, in my opinion, like if you're holding all else equal, the best moments themselves are going to be the ones that, that elevate Whereas the other ones, maybe they don't like fall through the floor, but they just can't elevate in that same way. You know, the cream rises to the top, right? The the best moments are going to be the ones that that end up standing out. And it's, you know, mint, you know, mint count, serial number and all those other kind of technical aspects will always be a major factor in moment valuation. But I do think as those moments expand, there's going to eventually, ironically, the moment itself will have to be a major, major factor. At least that's my kind of long-term opinion on it. And this is sort of a small example because you're going from one moment to four. But what if Halliburton ends up with 40 moments in his career and his 38th one is like a game six game winner or something that, you know, solidifies him as a legend or something in the game? Is that now the moment that everybody wants? Or is it the triple badge rookie moment? You know, that I think the moment itself is is going to really matter eventually. And and we're going to start, I mean, we're going to start seeing it. People are going to have to start making decisions on which, you know, again, it's not just, I have the Tyrese Halliburton, it's which Tyrese Halliburton do you have? That's going to matter. That's the beauty of this, of Top Shot too. Like that's the promise, right? Because I feel like in regular trading cards, it's like, well, 
you either have the rookie or the special edition. I feel like the player, like depending on what year they're from is like only matters so much. Whereas this, it's like, no, like how do you emotionally feel about the play at, in, in question? And that's, that's the extra layer here that where there, there is no precedent for how the market will react to this because that's where it's just totally aside. It's totally apart from normal cards is that there's that totally different layer. And that's a really good point. And I always, I always advise people on the podcast to think a little further ahead. I usually say like think seven seven or 10 days down the line of what's going to happen like from supply years. and dapper. Well, yeah, it's seven years. <laughs> but I like what you're saying where it's like, well, what's, Hall- what's going to happen to Halliburton in his career? What's going to happen to LaMelo, right? What's going to happen to some of the other rookies we're not thinking about, like Jalen Smith or someone like that? What, what are their careers going to look like, right? And how many moments do you think they'll ever have in Top Shot? And after that many years, if they have six different rookie year moments, which of those are actually going to matter long term? I love that, like game six, game winner. It's like, yeah, of course. Like there's there's, there's some players who are currently in circulation that have never been playoff heroes that by the end of July will be playoff heroes. And we don't know who they are, but that's going to happen. Like Tyler Hero last year was a great yeah, example. It forever changes, it forever changes the, how, how they're looked at. I mean, just culturally and, and then obviously in Top Shot now. You are a data master. You crunch a lot of the analytics, which is incredibly helpful for your audience and everybody else on Twitter and and even us here at the First Mint. We really love seeing that stuff and it helps us make a lot of decisions and and also decide what we're going to use to inform people. What kind of data are you looking at these days? I like to, I try to have kind of a core idea and then I try to test that or or look into the numbers to see if that supports the idea. The last time in deep dive that I did was essentially a revisit of sales by serial uh sales by serial number basically the theory is do we value serial number at an increasing rate and i think it's pretty safe to say we do if you see any of the charts that i put out on twitter it's pretty safe to say we do and what that means is that the distance between you know one serial one and serial two is massive and then two to three is a little smaller three to four is a little smaller and then eventually it all kind of just muddles out together and serial 2049 is not a whole lot different than serial 5031 the next one that i'm trying to uh trying to get my head around is um do we value scarcity at an increasing rate in other words, instead of looking at serial number sales, looking at sales by the mint count, um, a lot of times, which is kind of strange, you'll see, and I think I kind of know why, you'll see that a higher mint count moment actually trades or sell, you know, the, the offers on it and the sales data too are at a higher implied cap than a more rare moment. And the implied cap, for those who aren't familiar, is if you take the lowest ask and you multiply it by the amount of moments, the moment count, the mint count. That that's a way to sort of normalize and give you a better apples to apples comparison of two moments that have different mint counts. And so the theory would be something that is more rare probably is valued higher, like in terms of its cap. Like the price will obviously be higher, but is the actual like total value of that moment by cap higher as well? And in a lot of cases, or in a kind of peculiar enough to make you want to investigate, it doesn't seem to really make a whole lot of sense. Like the LeBron No Look 3 is worth more when you take its lowest price times the amount out there, 15000 It's worth more than some of LeBron's actually more rare moments out there. And I think the reason is because, one, when a price is lower, there's just more people involved in it. And two... Um, just liquidity. If there's a lot more people buying it and, and it's kind of like you got to have this one and it's the most accessible one, then it's probably going to be priced a little higher than maybe it technically should be. And so I, that's that's one thing that I really kind of want to test out just to see how that looks across the spectrum. Because at this point, it kind of like stands out in a few cases here and there. But I don't know if that's like this broad um, principle that you can maybe kind of look to, you know, on the long term. When the market opens back up, are you buying or selling? When the market opens back up, I'm probably buying unless everything is like three times higher than the last time I saw it. My current hunt right now is the cat cat, as I like to call it, which I love to fill in my buddy Plunge Father on where the cat cat is trading because my my dear friend bought his at like 
$525 just in the middle of the scrum. And he, he documented his quest to get it. And basically in a like self-deprecating thread, you know, said, you know, oh, I got swept up in the, uh, in the heat of this. And I, I scooped up one for, you know, $525 or something like that. My whole thought, and I posted it right at, right as it was coming out. I said, look, man, there's going to be a lot more supply coming out on this. And I, I pegged it at like, I don't know, 150 to 300 bucks or something like that. And now I don't know where it was last, but I've gotten pinged that it, it has gotten down to like 120 at some point. So basically I haven't bought it yet. I will, because it's basically where I need it to be. You know, it's just a lesson in patience. I mean, obviously I can't be right. I, you can't be right on everything. I, I was way off with the all-star prices, at least for now. Um, I think eventually I'll be closer to a uh, reality. You can't even it, buy but, them, man. Yeah, Don't be hard yeah, on yourself. Yeah, and, and listen, and listen, as, as people know, Anybody who follows First Mint on Twitter, you can't linger on bad projections, okay? You can't get caught up on estimates that you made and people laughed at you. You can't get stuck on that. It's going to happen. Look, I call them crappy projections for a reason, right? The crappy chugomatic. <laughs> it's crappy. You got to understand that, that that's just the way the machine works. I love it. People are going to spend their life savings on on the projections of something called the crappy chuck. I know chuck it's got a wastebasket next to it. You should have you should have kind of known already. <laughs> you mean the the Kevin Durant emoji? Yeah, <laughs> used by mistake. Oh, I love it. Well, Chugs, it's been great to have you, man. I'm sure people are going to love getting all this insight. Please follow Chugs and Bugs on Twitter. He is the man with the data and his crappy chug matic which is actually incredibly good. So don't let him tell you otherwise. Yeah, we're trying out here. We're all just trying to figure this out just like everyone else. I think that's kind of the beauty of it, right? We're, we're all kind of part of the same community, learning sort of a new disruptive kind of thing to, to get involved in. So we're doing the best we can. Again, if you want to follow Mr. Chugs and Bugs on Twitter, you can find him at exactly that handle, Chugs and Bugs, the N being just the letter N, not the word and also, some other great content to check out from the First Mint. You can go to our YouTube channel. There's a lot of new content there. There is my interview with Harrison Barnes from Friday where he talks about being a new collector at Top Shot and what his strategies have been as well as how his teammates have reacted to Top Shot. There's also our amazing Friday night live show from last Friday that featured some very exciting surprise guests, including Josh Hart, who ended up trading the Plunge Father a moment for some Boy Scout badges. I don't know, you'll have to check it out to see what it was. You can also check out our full two hour live stream from Saturday morning's pack drop that we were lucky enough to host on behalf of Top Shot on their Twitch channel. That includes myself, Plunge Father, the real Phil D, Jacob from Dapper. There's also a baby on that stream as well as Tamara Top Shot from Twitter. That's going to do it for today. Give us a follow at the First Mint on Twitter. Send us your questions. Send us your DMs. Hit up the whole network. We do our best to get to every single one. So don't hesitate to do it. Other things to look out for this week. Tomorrow night, we got the Plunge Father on the stream. Wednesday, we got another pod. And Friday, we have the weekly extravaganza of the live show. So keep an eye out for it. Otherwise, when that marketplace opens back up, keep on collecting and good luck out there. We'll see you next time on the First Mint.